Well, unlike some contests, all the high school football results are in, and we are ready to start calling some winners. Let's do it. Tonight was also the end of the regular season for every team in the state. Time to see who's ready for the playoffs. Let's go. Rivalry week, rivalry week, rivalry week. It's not easy to say, but it's here and so are we. Welcome into Football Friday Night presented by McCoy Federal Credit Union. I'm Christian Brewey. He's Joe Kepner. Now the longest running rivalry in Orlando is Boone and Edgewater. And tonight, once again, battling for that barrel. Eagles and Braves playing for the coveted barrel for the 69th time. I wonder what they'll do when they run out of room on it. Probably just get a new barrel. Senior night for the Eagles. Kanan Mobley was ready to celebrate. Hooks up with Tommy Hill. He peels away for a 73-yard touchdown at 7-0 Eagles. But in the second, Jacavis Lovett gets the Braves on the board with a one-yard TD. Ties the game at 7. And then on the first play of the ensuing drive, Christian Leary puts this one on the ground. Boone recovers the fumble in just 17 seconds after their first touchdown. Casey St. John finds Aiden Mizell. And there's six more. Boone takes a 13-7 lead after the missed extra point. Braves then recover another fumble and looked like they were going to score again, but Ja'Cory Thomas fumbles the ball at the two-yard line. Eagles take over with two minutes to go in the half, but they only need about 90 seconds, and it's Mobley capping the drive with a strike to Leary. Eagles back in front, 14-13 at the half. Now, Braves would fail on an onside kick to start the third, and two plays later, Mobley. Another touchdown pass. Jeremiah Conley on that one makes it 21-13. Later in the third, stop me if you've heard this one before. Mobley spending so much time in the air, the FAA made him get a license. <laughs> Another touchdown pass. I'm going to keep using that joke until Christian laughs at it. Tack on a field goal. Edgewater leads 30-13 heading into the fourth. Boone trims seven points off the lead in the fourth, but Eagles seal it with a nine-yard touchdown for Khalil Washington. Edgewater, once again, the kings of downtown Orlando. They win at 37-20. Edgewater coach Cameron Duke got tossed by the refs for too many sideline warnings. But he was back on the field after the game to talk to football. Friday night's Shane Whitehead. We were just really excited to get a chance to play for the barrel. Um, and, then, and, then, and then winning it for a third year in a row is means the world, means a ton. Because it was senior night, because this was our first home game. <laughs> and so these seniors, to get a win on senior night against the oldest rivalry around, pretty special. The last minute of the first half and the first minute of the second half, big momentum shifters for you. Being able to go 99 yards on that drive to make it 14-13 uh, was huge. Going at halftime and then to come, back, come out, get a score early, you know, and then keep the momentum uh, with, all, you know, with a lot of sloppy play, but finding a way to win, especially in these kind of trying times, it's, it, was, it was good. And the offense doing that motivated your defense. Yeah, I think, you know, hopefully you guys play, you know, complimentary ball, all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. And, you know, hats off to Boone, and they battled. They battled like crazy. And uh, Coach Johnson and those guys are do a really good job. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was sweet, and it was our first home game, and it's, this is a special place. Kanan's cannon was firing tonight. All right, sometimes it takes a team a week or two or three to get it all figured out. That was Wakaiva this year. Mustangs lost three of their first four, but have since reeled off big wins over South Lake Lakeland and could finish the regular season with a winning record if they could beat rival Apopka tonight. Lou Darter's had some struggles this season as well, had only scored more than 21 points twice all year. Late in the first, it's Junior Muratovich going to his favorite target, Harleyante Reed, and Harleyante. He's a tough dude to bring down after they switch sides at the end of the quarter. It's Muratovich capping the drive with a quarterback sweepy somewhere over there. Mustangs in front 7-0. Apopka answered right back, though. Akeem Lowe makes everyone think he's going to run. And then Javen Robinson all by his lonesome. 
70 yard sprint to the land of touchdowns. We got a tie game at seven, but then it kind of bogged down. So let's go to the fourth game still tied. Kendall Wilson comes up with a game changing play, a scrum for the football. Luther Johnson ends up with it. I think he got across the goal line before it popped loose. They give him a touchdown. Well, Kaiva takes the Mayor's Cup 14 to seven. Jones Tigers, one of the few undefeated teams left in the state, trying to close out a perfect regular season against West Orange. Third quarter, Jones up 17-14. Julian Calvez dumps it off to Steven Sparrow, and quarterbacks love this. Five-yard pass, turns into a 35-yard gain in the books, all the way down to the 15. Very next play, Sparrow. This dude has built a nest in the end zone this season. That makes it 24-14, Tigers. So let's go to the fourth. Tyson Robbins in at quarterback now. Elijah Williams, he's found a way to make it work with two QBs. Eddie Kelly goes up and gets it. And Daquan Harris finishes it off. Jones does complete the perfect regular season. They win tonight 38-21. Well, congrats to them. All right, Winter Park is a lovely community, but not always the easiest to drive through. The Winter Park football team, also a lovely community, and also not the easiest to drive through. The Wildcats defense giving up just four touchdowns in their six wins this year. And Winter Park hoping for another dominating defensive performance against Olympia tonight. First quarter, Titans threatening. C.J. Brooks tosses it up for Victor Jones Jr., but Daniel Edwards is there to slap it away. All right. Where was I? All right, they'd get a 3-0 lead after a field goal, though. But Winter Park responds on their next drive. Snap is low, but Aaron Rodriguez gets the handoff, slides into the end zone's DMs like, hey, what's up? Wildcats up 6-3. Then in the second, I think I'm way behind on these highlights. That was an interception there. Chase Copper, Edwards with the interception. Two hands on the ball. And if you, yeah, I'm not even sure where we're at in this one. Give Edwards an interception. He's going to want to run it back, and he does. Yeah, Jaden Kelly. Causes the fumble a few plays later. Brooks back to pass, gets attacked by Kevin Bird. Winter Park, another solid defensive performance. Olympia getting ready for the playoffs. Played their backups in the second half. Wildcats take it 34 3. All right, in Brevard, the cream of the county has risen to the top, and it's not much of a surprise. It's Coco and Rockledge. Yeah, Tigers and Raiders both undefeated, heading into the 41st edition of the Barbecue Bowl. And that's what they call one of the most heated rivalries across Central Florida. Rockledge has won the last three barbecue bowls. Opening drive of the game. Avery Smith running like there's a tasty brisket in the back of the end zone. Makes it 7-0 Raiders. Jumped to the second. Coco had cut the lead to four. DJ Arroyo to Donovan Giles. Nice to have a receiver with that type of catch radius. They would punch it in right after that to take the lead. Five minutes to go in the half now. Arroyo back to pass, but Jalen Housey jumps the route. It's a Housey call. Rock goes back in front, 14-10, right before the half. You know what goes well with barbecue? Sweet tea. Too bad we only serve OJ here. OJ Ross fights his way into the end zone. Coco wins the barbecue bowl and completes their perfect regular season, 45-34. And there was a surfboard on the line at East River tonight. Falcons taking on East River in their rivalry, dating all the way back to 09. East River defense gets the first big play of the night, pass tipped, and Elijah Ortiz there for the INT. Doesn't get ripped out, wrapped up, so he just takes off. Looks like he had a chance to score, but he's out at the four-yard line. So all the Falcons would need is one yard per play to score, but Lake Nona doesn't give an inch, gets the stop on fourth down. Ensuing possession. After a long march down the field, Aiden Clayton takes the pitch, rips off 27 yards to the end zone. Lake Nona seven points closer to that surfboard. Then later in the half, another big play by the defense. Nick Miner called for intentional grounding in the end zone. They say that's a safety. Then in the second, Cody Morrell looking for Morrell. Heaves it deep for Colin Campbell, picking up 35 yards on the pass. Curtis Simmons takes it in from there. They would lead 19 0 at the half, go on to win it 40 to 6. All right, in Oviedo, the Lions in their golf cart were hosting the IMG Academy white team that's different from the national team that's ranked number one in the country. Still some decent players on the field in this one, though. Stacy Cage is only a ninth grader, but you can see the talent. Points out his blocks, gets all the way down to the 10. Three plays later, Tyler Ross fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, sneaks his way into the end zone. That was the only touchdown of the first half. So Vito did all their damage after the break, though. They come all the way back to win it 28 to 13. 
Well, few teams in the state of Florida have had more success than Jacksonville Bulls. The 4A superpower has won double-digit state championships and is one of the favorites to get there again, so it's a solid test for a mainland team planning to make some noise in the 6A bracket. Easiest job in the world was the scoreboard operator for this game. Second quarter on fourth and seven, Caden Fordham not trying to throw it to LaMondre Joe, but that's who catches it. Doesn't lead to any points, but it was the beginning of a dominating night for the Buccaneers. Next possession for Bulls, it's third and 17. Gunnar Borey back to pass, but he will not get the opportunity. Big Sack kills the drive, and the cheerleaders, they would rejoice. Skip ahead to the third now. Mainland with first and goal at the seven. Jonathan Campbell throws into triple coverage, but James Randall somehow comes down with it. Buccaneers take a 7-0 lead. Bulls would get a field goal in the fourth to make it 7-3, and then we go to the final seconds. Bulls still down four. Jakey Judge heaves it deep, but Charles Reed comes flying in oh. for the pick. Mainland's defense holds the Bulldogs to a field goal. They win this one 7-3. Mainland will now fuel up their playoff bus and head north. Buccaneers face Gainesville in the play-in round next Friday. A bunch of low-scoring games this week. Timber Creek was shorthanded in their game last week, but coming up, could a full roster of Wolves bounce back against Cypress Creek? Plus, small schools begin their playoff journeys. Could OCP get, the, get through the first round last night? I can't wait to find out. Me neither, and the ballots are in for the play of the week. We'll announce the winner and introduce three new contenders because that's what we do every week. We'll get to all that, but first time for the Precision Door Service Battle of the Bands. We're going to kick it off with the Colonial Marching Band. Hey, Christian, what did Jay-Z call his wife before they got married? What? Beyonce. <laughs> 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 